All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all Yahweh out there for pushing his word with all truth and sincerity, and as well as to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. And uh, real briefly, I got a little time here uh, while I'm at the job. And uh, I want to go ahead and uh, do this lesson real quick. Um, and, you know, doing a little meditating earlier, you know how it is when we, you know, when we're in this world. Uh, you know, the Lord ain't just give us the ability to pray, you know, to pray to him. But he also gave us the uh, understanding on uh, how to throw up curses. <clears throat> so like you know how to throw up curses on these people man so we have uh, uh, a right hand and a left hand way so to speak in a way of uh, you know praying to our power you know yeah we could pray for good for ourselves for the believers so on and so forth but he also gave us the understanding on how to throw up curses in the Hebrew on these people in this world man now in saying that what I was thinking about earlier you know just, just being in this world you know, just the actions of these people, seeing certain things, it could piss us off. How I said about Lot, when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, seeing and hearing their wickedness daily vexed his righteous spirit, you know? Now, we're in the same situation to the point of um, we may be in traffic, somebody cut us off, or, you know, we out in public and somebody may so-called, you know, disrespect you or whatever. Um, and what's our first thought? To throw up curses on them. <laughs> You see, to throw up curses on them, and which a lot of people they don't even understand, you know, uh, that you have people who, the higher power, who control heaven and earth, that the Most High got people on the earth who he hearkened to, man. And people don't get that. They don't understand that. And and that's what I was thinking about, that uh, a lot of people, huh, how could I say it? A lot of people forget the, the fact that the Most High is working in the earth. You see, that's why it's also important to, to hey, hey, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. Watch who we, who we messing with, man. Watch who we talking to or disrespecting. Watch how we treat people because we don't know who is who. I'm thinking about Elisha. You, you had them 42 children trying to clown Elisha. And what Elisha did, he, got, he felt played. He got mad and he threw up curses. And the Most High had two uh, big-ass bears come and kill 42 children because what? They was talking about his prophet. The prophet fell play and he threw up a curse. And guess what? The Most High heard it. The point is, you still have men on earth today to where if a brother threw up a curse, the Most High could hit that and judge that man. You see? And judge that man. Now, the point I want to make in this lesson is that at times when, you know, some may aggravate us or somebody may do some tours intentionally or, you know, uh, not intentionally, the thing is, we may want to throw up a curse on that person, but what I was thinking about is, <laughs> that's not always even needed. You see, throwing up a curse on somebody ain't always even needed because the thing is, the Most High already got judgments waiting for these people, man. You know, we may be so mad in the flesh. Ooh, y'all watch me, I was shy, shalak, rayam, wa, nashim, wa, harakim, wa, mashapadyam. You see, all called is Edomite at my job. Whatever it may be, we want somebody to die instantly because <laughs> they cut us off in traffic. You know, we want people to die instantly because, you know, they may have took our parking spot at the store. <laughs> you see, or, or whatever it is. I'm just throwing out random scenarios. But the point is, when we get aggravated or vexed in the spirit, we may throw curses up. Um, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh you know, an impulse who may throw a curse up, you know, just, just in that moment. But the thing is, sometimes even us giving that energy to these people is not always needed. You see? Because you know why? These people, remember, these people already was created in vain. Think about that. These people was already created just to be extras in a movie. You know, they just here walking around, filling space until destruction come. Look, the Lord going to deal with them whether it's in Jacob's trouble and they die off in Jacob's trouble through a gruesome death, or the law will allow some of them to go through all those plagues in Jacob's trouble, right? Um, and suffer, and he gonna allow them to live all the way until the end just to get hit by missiles. So the thing is, 
we may want judgment to come to somebody, the Lord just kill him. Well, look, that's the easy way out. <laughs> that's the easy way out. I'd rather the Lord torture a man, keep him here, and let him suffer, let his family suffer, so on and so forth. The thing is, we don't always even have to use our energy to throw up curses and be mad at somebody. Look, the Lord will take care of him anyway. You see? And that's ultimately what I was thinking about. Let me get a, a few precepts. I'm short on time. I'll get a few. You know? Uh, let's, matter of fact, let me get this. Scarcely save. Scarcely save. Because the scripture said the elect going to scarcely be saved. What you think going to happen to these people who don't serve the Lord? That's the point. These people don't serve the Lord. So what you think going to happen to them even without, without us throwing up curses? They still going to get judged. Now, am I saying don't ever throw up a curse? No, throw up a curse. But the point is, at times, we don't always need to give these people our energy, man. 1 Peter 4 and 18, it says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, so if the elect barely make it, if the elect barely get saved, it says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, then where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So if the, if the elect barely going to make it, then what you think going to happen to the two-thirds? Then what you think going to happen to the heathens, man? They ain't going to have no chance. Look, the Lord is reserving these people until the day of destruction. Even if we throw up a curse and now we go on our day, we mad, you know, threw up the curse thinking we did something. Look, the Lord may have that person have a good day. <laughs> Look, you see, we mad at the person or whatever, whatever it may be. The Lord may have that person have a great day and you mad. Because look, it's already set for the Lord to judge people. Now, am I saying if we throw up a curse, the Lord can answer that? Clearly, he can answer that right on spot. You see, right on spot. But I'm also saying, look, judge, great judgments, gruesome judgments, it's about to come to this world. It's a time like never before. So we're about to see new judgments. The point is, whatever we may want to happen to a person, what the law going to do to them already is far more greater. Our mind can't even comprehend these new things the law about to do on the earth. We may want somebody, oh, Lord, let them get in the wreck. The Lord, let them get the, the new cv19 sickness look that's that's light work compared to what the lord really about to do to these people man you see now us throwing up curses could for the uh you know make the judgment worse but the point is it's already set these people got a a a, a horrible end coming to them man let me get another one this is uh let me let me get this job 21 because these people are already reserved for judgment and they ain't going to escape it. Real quick, this Job chapter 21, I'm going to get straight to the point. Verse 29, it says, Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? Let's read. Let's look up the definition of reserve. Just real quick on Google. It says reserve kept especially for a particular purpose or person. So the Lord, look, we may throw up a curse on somebody, aggravated, right? We're all in the Hebrew. You see, <laughs> we could be in the spirit, mad, throwing up the curses, thinking the most high about the answer. The thing is, he may not do nothing to that person right then and now. He may not do nothing to the person at all. You know why? It's not that he ain't hearing our prayers. It's that he already got them reserved for a day, a time, and a year to where he going to touch them. Now, us throwing up curses, it may make their judgment worse. Because the Lord do hear us, man. The Lord do hear us. He answer our prayers again. Elisha felt played because you had children talking about his bald head and what he did. He got mad, threw up curses, and the Most High sent judgment on, on 42 children, man. So he do hear us. You know, when we threw, do throw up curses, it could make that person who was being put on their judgment even worse than what it would have been. You see? So I'm not saying us throwing up curses, you know, is in vain. No, everything is for a reason, man. But what I'm saying is the Lord already got these people reserved. You see? Uh, let's finish that. It's Job chapter 21 and 30. It says that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. You see? And, and I'm going to say this. And it might be the Lord already want to judge a person and I curse was just that that confirmation that he could send out the hit now have an angel you know come down and and do what it do he just needed one more straw the last straw and us being mad and aggravated and put up the curse probably was the last straw you see but uh what else let me snag this so rock 40. i just got a few hours kind of meditating on before i came out here 
But again, man, most of these people is already reserved and set for judgment. You know, we ain't got to waste our energy being mad and aggravated, you know, you know, uh, throwing up curses again, bro. Throw up curses. I threw up some this morning my, <laughs> myself. But the point is, I'm talking about we ain't got to, you know, just go out of our way and, you know, lose our marble, so to speak, with these people in the world. The Lord already got something coming for him, man. You know, the pride of these people. Yeah, I know this shit aggravating, but hey, you know. They got it coming. But this is uh, Sirach chapter 40. And I'm going to start at 10. It says, you know what, I'm going to start up. It says, verse 8, Such things happen unto all flesh, talking about death, both man and beast, and that it is sevenfold more upon sinners. So death is coming more to people who do wrong, who don't serve the Lord. Just like these people who we put curses on. Death is coming to these people, man. And it says, what? Well, start off with death. It says death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. Check this out. These things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. All these horrible plagues that's coming. Guess what? The law says they are created for the wicked. And just like back in the ancient world with Noah, that's the reason the flood came. The, the flood ain't come for Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. You see, these plagues ain't gonna come for the elect who's serving the Lord right now, man. They gonna come for the people who the elect are vexed with daily. The people who piss the elect off daily. You see, the people who the elect throwing up curses on, that's who all these plagues coming for, man. See, these people already got great judgments set for them. You see, I already got great judgment set for him, man. We ain't got to worry about these people, you know, stress over these people. You know, you're trying to catch back up to them in traffic and, <laughs> you see, just to look at them and you speed back up. And, you know, man, look, and that's one thing I'm learning, man. Do not give these people in this world, especially in America, our energy. Do not. They already got judgments coming for them, man. All we, really, all we got to do is just watch and wait. Half of these people in the world was created just to die, man. Half of these people in the world was created just to be, uh, just to have their uh, judgment um, uh, put on the forefront so all can see. We living in that time, man. To a lot of people, as soon as they, they aggravate us, the Lord may do something. He may do something. If not, he's saving them for the time like never before, then it's going to be a judgment they never expected themselves to go through. And look, that's going to make us even more happier. Because what we may want somebody to go through now, it don't even compare to what the Lord going to do, do to them. So I'd rather, look, I'd rather wait. I'd rather them go through worse. You see, instead of just dying and look, now they go to the spiritual world, now they're in peace. No, Lord, keep them down here in the world. Take a leg away or something. <laughs> you see? Take some limbs away. Let, let them suffer. Instead of just giving the easy way out to these people and having them die. No, let, I want these people to suffer. We should want these people to suffer, man. You know? Let's move on. Though. Let's read that one more time. This is Rock chapter 40 and verse 9. It says, death, bloodshed, strife, and sword, calamities, and famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood, man. And for their sakes, the wicked, all these judgments go come to them, man. All these judgments go come to them. Let me get a. Uh, let me get one more. Let me get this in Sirach. Because look, even if they escape all those judgments, like we just read, right? The famine. Because the Lord may allow some of these people to get through the famine, get through, you know, the concentration camps, get through Leviathan, get through all these uh, tough times that's going to come in Jacob's trouble, but guess what he ain't going to let them get through? The missiles. So it, it, it may be that we want to put curses up on people so they can get judged right now, but how we know the Lord ain't saving these people for when the missiles drop, man. Let me get this real quick, because you have some escape Jacob's trouble, but they're going to die at the last plague, the missiles. Let me get this real quick. This is Sirach chapter 36, and I'm going to start at 6. It says, show new signs, and we're about to see that, and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy right hand, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. So like it says, glorify thy right hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. It says, raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. 
make the time short remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works and that's the time when now check it out it says and let him that escape of so you're gonna have people escape like i said famine in, in the six troubles it says let him that escape of be consumed by the rage of the fire you see that so you're going to have some people think they're getting away from the Lord's judgments. But on the last day, the day Yahweh Shai come, they're going to get the worst judgment, which is being hit by missiles. You see, so there's no way these people could run a hide, man. They already got judgment coming to them. And again, a lot of these people was born in vain. Let me get that real quick. They're just extras in the movie. Second Edges 9. You know, I ended on this. I got to get back up there. The second edge is nine, and I'm gonna start at 20. It says, "So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril, because of the because of the devices that were come into it, and I saw and spared it greatly, and I have kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people." So the Lord said there was much wickedness in the world, but out of this whole time, He kept him a grape of the cluster. Who is that? The elect. He kept the elect pure. He gonna keep the elect, the elect, man. But it says. So other than the elect who will get saved, it says, and let it says, and let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. You see that? So those who not of the elect, the Lord said, let the multitude perish, which is a lot of people, a multitude, right? It says, which was born in vain, man. So they're here just to take up space. You see? You have no purpose just to what? Be an extra in a movie. Born in vain. So you have a lot of people here who may cut you off in traffic, who may aggravate you, piss you off. Guess what? Guess what they lot is? Most likely born in vain if they ain't serving the Lord. Now, granted, the most I can have anybody turn, repent, come into the truth. But the majority of these people, the multitude that was born in vain, they're going to die anyway. Do not give your energy to these people in the world, man. Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain and let my great be kept and my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. That's all we should be concerned with the elect, man. But I'm in it right there. Lord willing, this lesson was that a fun. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Ba'ashim Yahweh Ba'ashim Rechakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you walking out there. We're pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And with that, Shalom.